just finished testing bikes for Women's Trail Bike of the Year. There were six bikes in our shortlist, uh, ranging in price from £2,500 up to £3,200, and we're about to reveal the top three. We also want to gauge the opinions and views of the women these bikes are aimed at. So we want to see how they feel about them, how the fit is for them, how they perform um, for a variety of different riders and riding styles. So to that end, we recruited a panel of five Bike Radar women readers who rode those bikes over two test weekends in the Forest of Dean and gave us their feedback. Those comments and those opinions have been incorporated into our overall reviews and the overall judging. In third place we have the Live Peak and it might be a bit of an unusual choice for a lot of people because it sits more towards the cross-country end of the trail bike spectrum and has a geometry to match. The head angle on the peak is 70 degrees which is a couple of degrees steeper than on the other trail bikes that we've tested and the seat angle is 73 degrees which is a little bit slacker. Now this sits within the uh, cross-country end of the trail bike spectrum, but it's a bit more unusual to see in the, in the bikes that we've tested today. And what it means in practice is that it feels like you're quite a long way over the front when you're riding the bike, but it does climb fantastically well. Now it does require you to shift your body position a little bit more over the front, and it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you are used to it, the bike is really capable. So don't be put off by that cross-country geometry. The peak can handle a lot more than you think. The other interesting element on the Peak is that it's the only bike with a women's specific frame. Live Cycling's design philosophy is that there are significant enough differences between men and women to warrant women getting a specific geometry of bike, whether that's road or mountain. So all Live bikes have a geometry designed for female riders based on the data that Live have collected. In terms of spec, you're looking at 120mm travel front and rear, provided by a RockShox Revelation RL fork and a RockShox Deluxe RT shock. One weak point was the flex in those forks. They do have narrow stanchions, so there was quite a bit of deflection and, and movement when going through corners fast or over rough terrain. However, they are fairly standard for a cross-country bike at this price point, and we also saw those on the specialised Camber Comp Carbon that we also tested. The rest of the spec consists of a SRAM GX 1x11 group set, SRAM Guide R brakes and giant XC1 wheel set with a good choice of Schwalbe knobby nick tyre at the front and Racing Ralph at the back. Unsurprisingly for a bike with a carbon frame and a 1x group set, this was the lightest bike in our test coming in at 12.41 kilograms. This was one of the most surprising bikes in the test. I have to admit, on paper, it wasn't one that I was looking forward to riding. I thought it was going to feel really nervy on the descents, but actually in practice, once you got used to that body position, it absolutely flies along and is a lot more capable than you think it's going to be. It makes quite sedate, fairly flat trails a whole lot of fun and the speed you can get this beast up to is unbelievable. So if you're looking for something to really fly along your local trails, to make flat terrain a lot more fun, to handle some quite technical descents fairly well, although obviously not as well as some of the bikes we've tested with longer travel, then it's really worth having a second look at because I had a lot of fun on this. The Specialised Camber Comp Carbon is a new addition to Specialised's trail bike lineup for 2017 and it's a 27.5 inch wheel 130mm travel trail bike. As the name suggests, the bike is based around a carbon frame and up front that 130mm travel fork is a RockShox Revelation RL Solo Air. At the back, the Fox Float Performance Shock gives a further 130mm of travel and both are set up with a women's specific tune designed to suit a lighter rider. It comes with a 1x11 group set which is a mix of SRAM NX and GX with a race face effect crank set. Finishing things off you have Shimano M506 brakes and rolling stock comes in the form of Roval Traverse wheels with a specialised purgatory tyre up front and ground control tyre at the back. They provide a nice fast rolling ride with good traction for the majority of single track but if you take them on anything that's particularly wet or slippy they do feel a little bit sketchy. The Command Post Dropper is worth mentioning. It gives 100mm of incremental travel or 120mm on the higher sizes and while it is effective the return is quite violent on it so be aware of that when you're putting it back into position ready to climb. 
Specialised have a mixed approach when it comes to their women's specific bikes in their mountain bike lineup. Some have women's specific geometry, some don't. The camber is based around a unisex frame that goes across the male and female range and features women's specific finishing kits such as the Myth Sport saddle, narrow bars and that women's specific tune that we mentioned earlier. At 720mm wide, those handlebars were some of the narrowest in our Bike of the Year testing. And personally, I wasn't a fan. I like something a little bit wider to give more stability on those descents. One interesting feature that's worth mentioning, particularly for those who don't like to ride with too much luggage on their back, is the SWAT compartment hidden in the down tube. SWAT stands for storage, water, air and tools, and it's plenty big enough to fit in a compact waterproof, maybe some snacks and certainly some tools. You can access it by opening a little flap that sits behind the bottle cage. One issue that we had was the auto sag feature on the shock. Now this is designed to make setting the sag easy and simple to do. You simply pump it up to a particular pressure, sit on it, weight it down, press the button and it should set that sag automatically for you. Now unfortunately in practice it didn't seem to work like that. We tried it across a number of different testers over the test weekend and the results were pretty inconsistent. We all ended up having to tweak it ourselves manually anyway. On flowing trails and technical climbs, this bike really comes into its own. Its lightweight and more cross-country style setup in terms of geometry means that it does really fly up those inclines. The Camber Comp also has the shortest chainstays of any of the bikes in this test, which gives it a really fun, playful and agile feel on single track. While this bike wouldn't be my first choice for anything technical and steep in terms of descents, if you are looking for something that's fun and playful on your local trails, then this is one to look at. Now, when we first called this bike in for the test, it was priced similar to the other bikes in tests at £2,900. Over the course of the testing, however, the price jumped up to £3,200, which makes it one of the most expensive bikes in this test. Now, it is a carbon frame bike, so you are paying for that but you also might find that there are aluminium frame bikes that have slightly better value in terms of spec. However, that's probably more of a consideration for UK customers. So other riders around the world, check out what your local dealer is selling them at and see if it's a good option for you. That means that the Canyon Spectral WMN AL is our women's trail bike of the year in our standard price category. Canyon's approach to women's specific design is the same as Cube and many of the other bikes on test, so they've gone for a unisex frame, which is the same frame across the whole range for both genders, and a women's specific finishing kit, so in this case it's an STG Allura saddle. It also features Ergon GE10 slim grips to suit smaller hands. As you'd expect from Canyon, you're looking at incredible value for money for the price you pay and one of the headline elements of this bike is the SRAM Eagle group set. For anyone who's not familiar with Eagle, it's a 1x12 system, so the simplicity of a 1x but with an even bigger range of gears and at the back you're looking at an 11 to 50 tooth cassette. RockShox supply the suspension in the form of top-of-the-line Pike RCT3 forks with 150mm of travel. The suspension worked really well straight out of the box after the usual tweaks that you'd expect. It's also worth noticing that, as with other full suspension bikes in this test, that Canyon have given it a women's specific tune, so that's essentially just tuned for a lighter rider. The geometry on the aluminium frame is pleasingly progressive with a 66.4 degree head angle. We're also pleased to see SRAM RS brakes on this, so they're really powerful, have great modulation and a good degree of adjustability so that you can tweak them to suit your riding style. The Reverb Stealth seat post is one of the least unreliable seat posts we've encountered. It gives 125mm of travel and we have to say that we didn't encounter any problems with it in the course of our testing. On the wheel front you're looking at Mavic XA Elite with a nice wide 25mm inner rim width. We're also a fan of the choice of rubber so you're looking at a Maxxis High Roller 2 at the front and an Ardent at the rear which gave plenty of traction in a wide range of conditions. Whatever terrain we rode this bike on, we were able to have a lot of fun on it. When the terrain was flatter, you could pump through, pop over little roots and rocks and just have a really playful, agile time. On steeper terrain, and we took this on some of the downhill tracks at the Forest of Dean, it handled steep shoots, rocky sections, drops and jumps with no bother at all. 
The suspension was plush but progressive, so it had great small bump sensitivity, but when you started to hit the bigger stuff, those big rock gardens, it ate them up with no problem at all. The bike also climbs really well. Maybe not quite as well as some of the more cross-country bikes we tested, but certainly it was above the field when it comes to the trail-focused bikes that we looked at. One of the things that did confuse us slightly was the remote lockout on the shock. The remote for the shock looks exactly the same as the remote for the dropper seat post, except obviously one's on the other side of the handlebars, which caused a bit of confusion for the first 10 minutes of the test when we couldn't work out why the seat post wasn't going up and down, but the shock was locking out. The other issue with it is that we don't really think that it needs to be there in the first place. We didn't really end up locking out our rear suspension on most of the trails that we rode on. Um, it is useful for those long, boring, tedious fire road climbs, but the rest of the time the suspension worked perfectly well with it on fully anyway. Of all the bikes in the test, this is the one that I got the most excited about. It's the one that I wanted to ride the most, it's the one that whenever I had a spare minute I wanted to jump on and take it for a quick spin or take it for a test sleep in my local woods. Firstly, it's just so much fun to ride. You know that you can throw anything at it and it will eat it up. If you want to take on something a bit more technical or push yourself, and I really tried to push the limits on this bike, it handled it perfectly well. So it's really encouraging as a ride. It's really confidence inspiring. It really makes you feel like you can push a little bit harder and try something a little bit more. So that's why for 2017 our choice of Women's Trail Bike of the Year is the Canyon Spectral WMN. It's a great bike, our testers love riding it, I love riding it. To be honest, I don't really want to send it back. <laughs>